Hey crafty friends, Kim from stampingandperfection.com. I'm so delighted that you're here today. I am trying something new this month because if you've been following me, you know that I have really gotten back into scrapbooking lately. I'm never going to give up stamping and card making and all my mixed media stuff, but I'm loving doing more scrapbooking and memory keeping in many different ways and forms. So I decided that I needed to beef up my stash a little because I've really used a good portion of my paper pattern stash and I really didn't have any alphabet stickers or die cuts or anything like that because I've been stamping in my scrapbooks for so long and using my alphabet stamps and creating my own die cuts and stuff, I decided to try out the Hip Kit Club for this month. So when I went to order the kit, this is the Hip Kit Club's October main kit, and it is chock full of stuff, as you can see. Now they also have a pocket page kit and a um, an embellishments kit that you can purchase separately from the main kit. The October um, pocket page kit was sold out so I purchased the September one and I had a lot of fun playing with that yesterday. Then the um, September embellishment kit was also or the October embellishment kit was also sold out so I decided I'll try the September one which worked out just fine because they have such a variety of products in there that there there are actually some things that coordinate with um, the October main kit plus um, I have tried some coordinating elements, like I, I definitely purchased some of, um, I think that's Maggie Holmes, that chipboard piece there. Um, I have had purchased, like in February, a package of die cuts from when I, the one or two, I went twice to a craft store in February in Florida when I was there and um, got some stuff. So I'm going to play with the October main kit today. and. I'm starting with this 12 by 12 white sheet of paper. Now this did not come in the kit. This is something that I had in my stash. So, and I have to say, I've been scrapbooking so much lately. My, my 12 by 12 paper is getting really skimpy. So I'm gonna have to start um, building that up again. So I'm starting with that and I'm gonna pull out this October main kit. And now this had 10 pieces of pattern paper it had um, it had thicker phrases. It had alphabet stickers. Like I was surprised at all this stuff I got in this kit, and I believe it was two thirty four ninety nine. It was like thirty five bucks. Um, and I'm today I'm I'm doing a prompt. Those are pictures of my dad with dogs, because dogs love my father. And um, the prompt that I'm using for the challenge that I'm doing for October. Today's story prompt was about um, family dogs or family animals. So you can see all the stuff. I got chipboard pieces. I got a lot of ephemera die cuts. Um, I got the thickers alphabet stickers. I got thicker phrases. I got a set of Simple Stories frames. A lot of these papers are from Simple Stories Cozy Days, but th these here are from the Hip Kit Club, apparently, is coming out with their own line of stuff. There are a couple sheets of, of um, the Hip Kit Club line in there, those two right there. And uh, there were a couple of, um, what was the other one in there? Uh, Amy Tangerine Late Afternoon pieces in there so they were really nice and these all coordinate together all these products are um, designed not designed but they are coordinated by the hip kit people to work together and I think it's pretty fun that they mix different lines so you can try out a variety of things so I'm going to start with this great plaid from I believe this is from the cozy days collection and um, I am just, I want a half a piece of that. I either want to put that on the top or the bottom of my card base. And this is something very cool. These chipboard frames, I was thinking that I could use them, but then I realized the double ones aren't tipped correctly because I definitely am going to use these two pictures. And there, there are a couple of frames that go sideways, but I just didn't think I could make it work using only one of them. Maybe I could have. And I actually, looking at it now, I like the way that looks. 
and I kind of wish I'd done that, but I'm happy with the way my page turned out. So I'm just going to take this piece over to my cardstock stash because I want to put my, I like to put my pictures, like these pictures are old and they have no borders and I like to have some kind of border around my picture. So on my older pictures in my stash, like pre-digital friends, these are pre-digital and um, these pictures I will mount either onto a couple pieces of cardstock or onto that pattern paper that I had in my hand a minute ago. So I'm, I just took a piece of this plaid over and I pulled out a few things that I thought might coordinate. I picked a yellow, I picked a blue, and I wasn't sure whether I needed an orange or a red orange, and it turned out to be that I needed that orange. So you can see those go beautifully. So I've pulled out some sheets, some a couple of the other pattern sheets. I really like that little um, strip on the bottom that the you know that's the it's got the name of the paper on one side and then it's got a nice decoration on the other side so I pulled one off the um, I think that was the late afternoon or no that was from the hip kit, hip kit club piece and then this they had this one cut apart thing I think this page is genius this is a from the cozy days simple stories set. I love this. So I cut this apart and I'm going to use one of the floral ones because my dad liked to um, garden a lot. So that seemed appropriate. And I really liked the colors it had in it to go with that plaid and the back, they just lined those up perfectly. So I could choose to use the tag on the back as well. So I'm just going to clip off those corners and then that, this is the only hole punch I have and I'm going to punch that hole there. So I'm going to take those pictures and I'm going to create some background backgrounds for them. So it's going to start by figuring out what size those are and they're not quite five, they're like three and a half by like four and seven eighths or something. So I'm just going to cut this piece of pattern paper one eighth inch bigger all around and I really liked the orange a lot. I liked that orange grid on there and I loved the back of this paper. I thought the back was fantastic. So I'm going to cut another piece of that paper and use the back of it as well. And I find it easier to trim down the paper by just like putting that my picture on the first piece and then putting the first piece where I want it and then I can kind of get I do a better job getting an even frame all around the picture by doing this like for some reason that's easier for me because I really am used to where my cutter cuts relative to the edge of things so I do a better job with that and you'll see here so I'm going to use that blue because there is this this very color of blue and this very color of yellow in that plaid and for some reason now that I look at this it, I really thought I cut that at the right dimension but I don't know what I must have been like a half an inch too short or something um, so I'm going to just layer these together and I want the yellow on the bottom and the blue on the top because I think the blue will look better against that um, picture and I like the yellow uh, against the cardstock. So um, I'm going to put that frame aside and definitely I'll use it. I'm just trying to decide, do I want that paper? This is cut six by 12. Do I want it along the bottom or the top? But I'm going to put it along the top because I recently made another page where I put it along the bottom. So, you know, I'm going to stretch, stretch my designing talents here and switch it up. I loved this little strip with, this has got like fall leaves on it in the same colors are similar colors like the blue is in there and it's quite nice like what a nice edging for a piece of paper and most people probably throw that out but um, I loved it so I'm using it like it looks good on the bottom of that paper now one of the things that came in the kit was this Jen Hatfield this is the Avenue collection of icon ephemera so I'm just going through it and I am thrilled by all the dogs in there. I love those trees. I love the acorns. I love the gold houses. And I, like, I can't believe my luck at all the dogs in this set. 
like the theme for today is basically dogs and my father was basically the dog whisperer every dog loved him and um, there's a little dachshund in there I was so happy to see that and there's even one in here you can lots of houses lots of butterflies like this is great I love the wood pattern on um, a, like the tree in that row of houses that I pulled out earlier and I'm looking at the chipboard but I'm not seeing anything that works for me with this page so and I'm also looking at the thickers there are a lot of great things here but I really think I'm gonna use um, the alphabet stamp because I want it to say dad the dog whisperer so um, that's what I'm gonna do so right now I'm tilting both of my pictures and now I'm just gonna play around with the die cuts and the ephemera and for me like this is a matter of moving them around and playing and like are there people who can just like in one shot put the um, stuff exactly where they want it I know that I want a clump of ephemera down on, on one of the bottom corners and I think I'm gonna go with the left corner and I want I, I like to have three ephemera clumps and um, I like that visual triangle that was something that I learned from doing all the Vic, Vicki Booten mixed media live things that I do on Wednesdays and Fridays with her like I've learned so much from her it's ridiculous and um, I've taken a few of her album classes which are very different than this but um, I've I just she's just full of like golden nuggets that's what she calls them so I'm just arranging I'm trying to get a dog in each one of those those locations a tree in each one of those locations a go something gold in each one of those locations and a house so I'm gonna use this tag I decided I'm I had a piece of um, this like jute twine sitting on my desk that from another project and I'm gonna like make that my journaling box but I want it to be like removable so you know I'm just playing around with pieces and seeing what they look like and I realized that those are bird houses as I was holding them there I realized that so I'm just, I just keep playing with them and rearranging them and fussing you know until you get something you really like and I love this orange paper that with the grid pattern it, like that's a like a light blue or that um, that blue car cardstock color is really what it is and I'm just gonna take I couldn't find my corner rounder which should be on my table somewhere but this table looks like a bomb went off so I used a little tiny hole puncher and just rounded the corners with that so I'm just tucking I love these big acorns that one with the gold on it in my hand right now is beautiful like that's beautiful so um, I'm you know I think I'm to the point where I am now going to stick things down so I will just do that and I like to put a piece of foam on the back of things and notice that I'm not putting foam on the whole thing I'm putting it like on one side or just on the top or or just on the bottom because I feel like it lays better like they clump together better if I have like part of it flatter and part of it popped up like I like the top part and one side popped up on a lot of things so I'm just arranging these I love that little three row of houses because it looks like wood paneling and in the 70s the late 60s early 70s my father remodeled our house he did all the work literally all the work everything and there was a wood paneling everywhere um, so that wood paneling and that that actually particular plaid I'm pretty sure dad had a plaid flannel shirt that color so I loved it as soon as I saw it, it I knew that was the perfect paper to use for photos of my dad my dad would have been uh, 79 two days ago so I really wanted to make a scrapbook page with some photos that I had and had not scrapbook these photos are from 1991 believe it or not I didn't even have children yet and um, that dog is long gone and he's a puppy in that picture then my father used to always lay on the floor and play with us when we were really little and you know he'd like flip us around and do all kinds of things 
Um, and then he played with the dogs on the floor all the time. So, and whenever he sat down, they would climb in his lap. There's two dogs in his lap. One is mine, one is my sister's. And at this point, in night by 1991, we are both married. And I'm pretty sure my sister either had my niece or was pregnant for my niece. So this is a very long time ago because my niece is like 30 now, almost 30. She'll be 30 next year. So I use that paper to create like a tab f under the top of my picture because I love those labels and tags and tabs above the pictures. And I'll put a little sentiment piece on that of some sort. And um, again, you, can, you see I'm just really putting one like foam dot there and popping up one side and then the the bottom part will lay flat and it really makes it the layering so much easier I also put a couple foam dots under that um, picture of dead and the two dogs and notice that I straightened that out I, I liked it better with one that was flat and parallel to the edge of the page and the um, plaid pattern and then I liked the second one tilted. I like it better than both of them tilted because it looked like I intentionally tilted the other one. So for some reason it just felt better this way. So I'm just gonna, I popped out the two little gold hearts and as I'm trying to decide where to, these should go I realized they need to go in the bottom because I don't have any gold down there. I have gold in all three places. I have a dog in all three places. I have a tree in all three places. I did remove the house from the, the right side, but I've got the gold there, so it, that works for me. And I love this. this is the, um, these are the puffy, thicker alphabet letters that came with it. And I love the Ds because it looks my, like my dad's handwriting, actually, so I really liked it. And I, I really liked this, and there were several sentiments that I could have put there, but I really wanted it to say um, the dog whisperer because literally animals everywhere flocked to him. They loved him. He grew up on a working dairy farm, got up every morning before school and after school to milk the cows and take care of the animals on the farm. So now I'm just looking, I pulled out the September ephemera kit and I'm just looking to see if there's anything that I want to use. Um, but I put most of it back in and a lot of good stuff. There was a whole box of really nice wood die cuts, like wood veneer pieces in there that I can't wait to use. There were frames and houses and florals. So I pulled out from the pocket page kit this um, sticker pad. This is a, I think this is a Maggie Holmes sticker pad. And is it a Maggie Holmes? Yep, it's a crepe paper Maggie Holmes. And I'm just pulling off um, above the picture I put memories. And then underneath it, it says perfect memories, perfect moments captured. So I found three stickers to put together that says perfect moments captured. And I'm pretty happy about that. And I was excited to see this little alphabet set in this sticker book. Like I thought that was pretty fun. So I pulled out um, this ruler and I'm going to just use the ruler to line it up. This is a like a, a ruler that's got the zero in the center. I use this a lot when I'm trying to um, line up layers and things. So I'm just going to do the tedious process of um, like lining up the letters and then putting them out on the page here. So I won't make you watch all that. So I used to be really good at this technique for the um, putting the alphabet stickers down, but literally I have not done this in years, like 15 or 20 years at least. And um, so I need to practice that. But those rulers or some kind of tool like that, you can create your own tool with a piece of acetate, just drawing a, uh, with a Sharpie marker, draw a line like a quarter of an inch from the top and you've got a tool for yourself to help put those alphabet stickers down. Now I'm going to add one last touch because I cannot leave all that white space without ink splatter. So I'm just going to use Catherine Pooler's icing on the cake, spritz it with water, take, I'm taking a big 
This is like a number 14 paintbrush. I'm going to add more water because I need a lot of water. And I'm just going to give it some splatter. I just love the splatter. So I'm trying not to get it on the ephemera and the photos and stuff. I just want it in the white space. And I want to get a little bit of the splatter on that plaid above. So I'm going to go ahead and add it there as well. So I have a little bit of splatter on the top and I was pretty careful about not getting it on the stuff. It takes a little practice to do that, but that's okay. So the one last thing, I felt like it needed some more green since I had some green in the acorns, one of the trees, and um, actually both acorns had green in them. I felt like it just needed a little bit more green. So I pulled out some enamel dots because I just felt like it needed a smaller embellishment. Um, besides those two little gold hearts. So I'm putting a few of those around. So while I'm doing that, I'm being aware of my visual triangle so that I have some of those green enamel dots by each set of the, um, each one of my different ephemera clumps. And I'm just going to add my journaling. So I've created a little pocket behind that picture. I can tuck the journaling in. The journaling boxes, sometimes I find hard to find a place for that they don't stick out like a sore thumb. So I love creating a little interactive piece here that people can pull out. And I'm just going to um, pull apart that jute and make it a little um, fluffy looking. And I love a natural element on a fall page. I just think that's fantastic. So that's going to complete my page and I'm super happy with it. I will definitely buy another hip kit club. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Make sure you click the bell to get notifications. Make sure you stop by my blog at stampingimperfection.com. Thank you so much for watching.